on December 18, 2025, the most sensitive search for extraterrestrial intelligence ever conducted on a verified interstellar object concluded not with a bang, but with a profound and scientifically significant silence. As the interstellar comet 3I Atlas raced past Earth at a distance of 168 million miles, the Green Bank Telescope, a colossal 100-meter dish nestled in the radio-quiet mountains of West Virginia, stared unblinkingly at the visitor, scanning the electromagnetic spectrum for the faintest whisper of artificial technology. The results of this high-stakes observation have now established a strict upper limit on the possibility of alien presence. If 3I Atlas were an active probe, it is transmitting with less power than a standard consumer light bulb, effectively ruling out any active beacon or high bandwidth telemetry directed our way. This moment represents the culmination of months of intense speculation and serves as a definitive data point in our ongoing quest to distinguish between the natural debris of the galaxy and the artifacts of other civilizations. By confirming that the object is radio silent down to a transmitter power of just 0.1 watts, humanity has effectively closed the book on the alien hypothesis for this specific visitor, pivoting the narrative from science fiction back to the equally fascinating realm of cometary physics. To understand the magnitude of this specific observation, one must first appreciate the unique nature of the target itself. 3I Atlas was not merely another rock, it was a hyperbolic intruder, an object that fell into our solar system from the galactic north with a velocity so extreme, exceeding 80 kilometers per second at its peak, that it could possibly not be bound to our sun. Discovered in the summer of 2025 by the Atlas Sky Survey, it was immediately identified as a messenger from another star system, only the third such object ever catalogued by human astronomers. Unlike its predecessors, Oumuamua and 2I Borisov, 3I Atlas offered a Goldilocks opportunity. It was brighter and closer than Borisov, yet displayed more predictable behavior than the enigmatic Oumuamua. However, the shadow of Oumuamua loomed large over the mission planning. That first visitor had displayed anomalous acceleration without visible gas jets, a trait that led reputable scientists to seriously consider the possibility of a light sail or an artificial craft. While 3I Atlas appeared more comet light from the outset, the Breakthrough Listen team operated on a principle of agnostic vigilance. You cannot find what you do not look for. The possibility, however remote, that an interstellar object could be a dormant probe or a data-gathering device meant that a dedicated techno-signature search was not just a luxury, but a scientific necessity. The instrument chosen for this interrogation, the Green Bank Telescope, GBT, is the largest fully steerable radio telescope on the planet, a marvel of engineering capable of capturing radio waves that have traveled for billions of years. For the observation of 3I Atlas, the telescope was configured to listen across a massive swath of the radio spectrum, specifically the 1 to 12 gigahertz range. This bandwidth is of particular importance to the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, SETI, because it encompasses the terrestrial microwave window, a region of the spectrum where background noise from the galaxy is at its lowest and the Earth's atmosphere is most transparent. Within this window lies the water hole, a quiet band between the spectral lines of hydrogen and hydroxyl, universally considered a logical meeting place for interstellar communication. If an alien civilization intended to build a probe that could communicate across the vast distances of space, the laws of physics suggest they would utilize these frequencies to minimize signal degradation. By targeting this specific range, the researchers were effectively tuning their receiver to the universal emergency channel, ensuring that if 3I Atlas were speaking, we were listening on the right frequency. The methodology employed during the observation window was designed to be rigorous and redundant, mitigating the risk of false positives that has plagued SETI research in the past. The team utilized a technique known as nodding, where the telescope alternates its focus between the target object and a patch of empty sky. This on-off cadence is the primary filter for separating local interference from genuine extraterrestrial signals. 
In our modern age, the radio spectrum is polluted with the noise of human civilization. GPS satellites, Starlink constellations, high-altitude aircraft, and terrestrial radar. If a signal is detected while the telescope is pointed at the comet, the on phase, and persists when the telescope looks away, the off phase, it is confirmed as local interference. A true technosignature would appear only when the dish is locked onto the coordinates of 3I Atlas. Over the course of the observation, the GBT performed these nods with mechanical precision, collecting terabytes of raw voltage data that captured the dynamic radio environment of the object during its closest approach to Earth. Processing this immense dataset required the use of the Turbo SETI pipeline, a sophisticated software suite designed to hunt for narrowband signals. In the chaotic cacophony of the cosmos, nature is a broadband broadcaster. Quasars, pulsars, and gas clouds emit radio waves that are smeared across wide frequency ranges. Intelligence, by contrast, is efficient. An artificial transmitter compresses energy into a tight, narrow frequency to maximize range and clarity. The Turbo SETI algorithms combed through the 1 to 12 gigahertz data, looking for these telltale spikes of concentrated energy. However, the search was complicated by the Doppler effect. Because 3I Atlas was moving relative to Earth at a staggering speed, any signal it transmitted would drift in frequency, sliding up or down the dial like the siren of a passing ambulance. The software had to account for thousands of potential drift rates, effectively de-smearing the data to uncover signals that might otherwise be masked by the object's motion. This computational hurdle is significant, requiring massive processing power to ensure that a drifting alien signal isn't discarded as noise. The sensitivity achieved by this configuration was unprecedented in the history of interstellar studies. The analysis determined that the GBT could detect a transmitter with an effective isotropic radiated power, or EIRP, of approximately 0.1 watts. To contextualize this figure, it is roughly equivalent to the power output of a standard mobile phone or a weak handheld walkie-talkie. Most deep space probes launched by humanity, such as the Voyager or New Horizons spacecraft, utilize transmitters with power outputs ranging from 12 to 20 watts to bridge the gap between the outer solar system and Earth. If 3I Atlas possessed a communication system even a fraction as powerful as 1970s human technology, the Green Bank Telescope would have detected it as a blindingly bright spike in the data. The fact that the search could constrain the limit to 0.1 watts implies that if the object is artificial, it is either completely dead, operating in strict radio silence, or utilizing a communication technology such as optical lasers or neutrino beams that falls entirely outside the radio spectrum. Despite the exquisite sensitivity of the search, the result was a definitive non-detection. The initial pass of the data flagged thousands of hits, a standard occurrence due to the density of Earth's radio environment. However, the rigorous filtration process rapidly whittled these candidates down. Signals that appeared in the off-source direction were discarded. Signals that did not exhibit the precise Doppler drift consistent with the trajectory of 3I Atlas were eliminated. Finally, the remaining candidates were cross-referenced against databases of known satellites and orbital debris. One by one, the potential technosignatures were identified as human-made interference. At the conclusion of the analysis, not a single signal remained that could be attributed to the interstellar visitor. The object was radio silent. While this may disappoint those hoping for a first contact scenario, scientifically, a null result is an incredibly valuable piece of data. It transforms the artifact hypothesis from a wild guess into a tested and rejected theory for this specific object, allowing astronomers to focus their resources on understanding the natural properties of the comet. The radio silence from Green Bank aligns perfectly with the multi-messenger data collected by other observatories, creating a unified picture of a natural object. While the radio astronomers listened for transmissions, optical and infrared telescopes, including the James Webb Telescope, analyzed the chemical and physical composition of 3I Atlas. These observations detected the presence of cyanogen, diatomic carbon, and water ice, the standard chemical building blocks of comets found within our own solar system. Furthermore, as the object approached the sun, it developed a distinct greenish coma and a faint tail behaviors driven by the sublimation of ices. 
The anomalies that had fueled speculation, such as its slight non-gravitational acceleration, were successfully modeled as the result of natural outgassing jets pushing the nucleus, a phenomenon well understood in cometary physics. The convergence of the radio non-detection with the optical confirmation of volatile outgassing cements the consensus. 3i Atlas is a chunk of dirty ice and rock ejected from a dying solar system eons ago, drifting through the void until chance brought it briefly into our view. The broader implications of this study extend far beyond the specific identity of 3i Atlas. They validate the maturity of our planetary defense and SETI capabilities. The ability to go from the discovery of a fast-moving interstellar object to a targeted, high-sensitivity radio observation in a matter of months is a logistical triumph. In previous decades, telescope time was allocated years in advance, making it nearly impossible to react to targets of opportunity like interstellar interloopers. The 3i Atlas campaign demonstrated a new agility in the scientific community, characterized by rapid data sharing between optical survey teams and radio observatories. This readiness is crucial because the next interstellar object could be discovered at any moment. Statistical models suggest that at any given time, there are likely thousands of interstellar objects passing within the orbit of Neptune. As our survey telescopes improve, we will find more of them. The protocols refined during the 3i Atlas observation, the frequency choices, the nodding strategies, the D-Doppler algorithms, will serve as the template for future searches. We are effectively rehearsing for the day when the phone finally rings. Furthermore, the natural verdict of 3i Atlas provides a different yet equally thrilling kind of cosmic connection. If 3i Atlas is a natural comet, its similarity to our own solar system's comets suggests that the processes of planetary formation are universal. The fact that a star system light years away produced an object with the same water, carbon, and nitrogen chemistry as the material that formed our own Earth implies that the ingredients for life are not unique to our corner of the galaxy. 3i Atlas is a sample of a distant world delivered to our doorstep free of charge. By studying its isotopic ratios and chemical abundances, we are effectively conducting an exoplanetary geology mission without ever leaving Earth orbit. The radio silence simply confirms that this package arrived without a return address or a sender's note, leaving us to decipher its origins through the silent language of chemistry and physics. As 3i Atlas continues its journey outward, destined to pass the orbit of Jupiter in March 2026 and eventually exit the solar system forever, it leaves behind a legacy of data that will be mined for years. The non-detection at 1 to 12 gigahertz helps refine the parameters of the Drake equation, specifically the variables concerning the prevalence of active probes. It forces us to confront the reality that if the galaxy is colonized, the colonizers are not filling the void with loud omnidirectional radio chatter. It suggests that our search strategies may need to evolve, perhaps moving toward optical SETI to hunt for laser pulses, or focusing on artifact SETI, searching for heat signatures of Dyson spheres rather than communication signals. The silence of 3i Atlas is a data point that narrows the search space, saving future researchers from chasing ghosts in the same frequency bands. Ultimately, the breakthrough listen observation of 3i Atlas serves as a testament to human curiosity and the scientific method. Faced with an unknown object from the depths of space, humanity did not succumb to fear or baseless superstition. Instead, we turned our most powerful instruments toward the sky and asked a direct question. We applied the rigors of physics, mathematics, and engineering to investigate the unknown. The answer we received, that the object is silent, natural, and ancient, does not diminish the wonder of the event. It reminds us that the universe is vast, filled with wandering stones that carry the history of dead stars, and that we, the watchers on this pale blue dot, have finally developed the eyes and ears to greet them. The search continues, not because we found something this time, but because we now know exactly how to look when the next visitor arrives.